Michael, thank you for joining us. You're welcome. So what brings you to London this year? Well, I'm on the board for WNA. Uh, I've been on the board now for oh, about a year and a half. Um, I uh, succeeded Amir Shakarami, and uh, I'm very much enjoying it. Love London this time of year. I uh, came from Chicago. It was about 95 when I got here yesterday, so it's great to be here. What is the current thinking within the sector? Well, you know, I'm bullish on nuclear power. I, I, I've worked in the sector for 33 years. Uh, I started with startup, uh, three of Exelon's facilities uh, back in the day. And uh, over the years, with the self-critical safety culture that we've developed um, internal to the sector, performance has just improved uh, year over year over year. In fact, the United States fleet, I believe last year, just completed their best operational year in the history of nuclear power. Um, the Exelon fleet is on track uh, to generate this year at about 93.5% uh, capacity factor. That's 23 reactors. Um, it is a low carbon to no carbon emitter, uh, very environmental friendly, uh, employs a lot of jobs and infuses a lot of capital in, into the local communities. Very much loved uh, by the local communities in the state uh, for what it brings. So nuclear power is good for the country. Uh, it's good for the world, I believe, uh, as another great source of environmentally friendly electricity. There are a lot of people who suggest that it's, it's not an environmentally friendly mm. energy source. How would you counter that? I, I think part of that is just an educational uh, gap uh, on their point. Uh, we generate not only electricity from nuclear power, but also wind. Uh, we're the 10th largest wind generator in the United States, uh, a very large natural gas generator uh, in the United States, and we also have large solar facilities. Uh, in 20 states, uh, we actually have power plants. And uh, I can tell you uh, emphatically, uh, because we're a promoter of all, uh, that nuclear energy is the best environmental source uh, if you take a look from manufacturing all the way from operations. So I think it's an educational issue. What is the current landscape of nuclear energy within the United States? It's, it's tough right now uh, in the United States, although I do see some movement uh, in, in the positive direction. Uh, as you know, the United States uh, is, has a very abundant supply of natural gas and uh, that's driven uh, natural gas prices way down uh, in the sector in the, in the two to three dollar range, a million BTUs. Technological advances in natural gas uh, machines uh, has improved the heat rates. So natural gas machines are very competitive in the United States. You combine that uh, with subsidized renewables in the area of tax, uh, in, in tax benefits and it's very hard to compete uh, with subsidized sources. So uh, we are working uh, with the local state governments and the federal governments in putting policy in place that recognizes the great advantages that nuclear brings, uh, both from a reliability perspective and an environmental perspective. What we've seen in the capacity markets, you know, we make our, our money in two different ways, uh, one from energy and one from capacity, is uh, significant positive improvement uh, recently, uh, at least in one of the RTOs, um, uh, recognizing the value that highly reliable nuclear brings. I could take you back to the polar vortex uh, that, that happened uh, across central and northern United States uh, about a year and a half ago. And uh, most of the natural gas plants and the coal plants were not generating. It was nuclear that carried the day that prevented uh, brownouts and blackouts during that time. Uh, natural gas was being diverted to home heating, uh, which you would expect. You, you don't want your citizens to freeze. And uh, coal stacks uh, were being frozen at that time. So the nuclear fleet in the United States, the Hunter reactors, uh, ran a greater than 95% capacity factor. And so the capacity markets, at least in PJM, uh, one of the RTOs, have been modified to take in consideration the reliability that nuclear brings. What does the future hold for nuclear energy within the United States? Well, there's uh, five nuclear plants uh, that are currently under construction uh, in three regulated markets. Um, in the unregulated markets right now, uh, we're looking at plant life extensions and working on policy that recognizes the value that they bring. So we have no new nuclear power plants in the unregulated markets currently planned doesn't say it's going to stay that way, uh, but uh, we are looking at uh, extended life uh, beyond 60 years, 
and uh, the regulator is very open uh, to regulation to work with us. And is that coming about through new modeling? Actually, um, there really is no new regulation that's required. It's just validating that the current equipment, both the passive components um, and the consumables, uh, have the proper preventative maintenance programs and the proper testing is done. Uh, we use research arms like EPRI uh, to help us validate uh, whether or not certain components need to be changed out or not. And uh, we think uh, right now with our projection on current power prices, it is economical uh, to extend the reactor's life from 60 to 80 years. Thinking forward to COP this year and perhaps even further beyond, what is nuclear power's contribution? Well, it's interesting you bring that up with the uh, newest uh, regulation that's been put out called 111D um, in, in the United States. It really gives uh, leeway for the states to make their own policies uh, within the guidelines that are set by the federal government. Uh, I think it makes nuclear power very valuable. Um, uh, if, if we end up going to a mass base type carbon emissions rule, um, nuclear power is going to be there to fill huge gaps for the states uh, to be able to meet their, to meet their targets. Uh, I, I personally think it's very, very difficult for any of the states with nuclear power plants to lose those and to think that they're going to make it up with just renewables uh, on their own. So I think it's very positive. Uh, states like Illinois, uh, we are working with on a low carbon standard. Uh, haven't got it passed yet, but we're in very positive discussions with them on trying to realize the value from an environmental perspective uh, that nuclear power brings. So I, I think it's optimistic for it. And what is the World Nuclear Association's part to play in all of this? Well, the WNA obviously is a huge supporter uh, of what we do. I think it's important as the largest generator uh, in the United States to be part of that uh, world community, obviously to share lessons learned. Uh, I also chair a committee called Cordell, which is standardization of reactor design and licensing issues. Um, I do not expect uh, all the states uh, um, in the world to give up their or abdicate uh, their right to govern. I, I don't think that will happen, but it does bring a lot of advantages uh, from one country to another. If there's a standardized design that's accepted in one technical community and gives them assurance that uh, other folks have looked at it, and it's a standardized approach and accepted design. And what does the future hold? Oh, I think, uh, I think nuclear power is going to play a big role uh, in the world's energy. Um, I, I just took a look and I think you're gonna see in tomorrow's meeting breakout uh, just what the demands for nuclear energy are going to be, at least the predictions uh, over the next couple decades. And I think without nuclear power, there isn't a chance we can make our carbon emission goals. I also think it's a very reliable technology and a safe technology. So I think there's a good thing in our future. That's a very nice note to end on. Thank you. Great talking to you, Matt.